Hi, I'm Patty with Studio 12 Stencils, and today I am gonna show you so many things. You are gonna enjoy this painting lesson. I'm gonna show you how to do this distressed barnwood background. I'm gonna show you how to do drop shadow using a stencil. You've never done drop shadow as easy as this. And I'm gonna show you how to distress over the top of your stencil with the distressed background effect. A lot of lessons, I hope that you join us. guys, so I want to welcome you all and thank you for joining us today. Um, if you're catching us on Facebook, we have prizes. So we're gonna give away two sets of our dome brushes. And if, you're, oh, if you already own a pair, make sure that you go ahead and tell the other people that are with us today what you like about them because they do make all the difference in the world. So we're gonna give those away for like, sharing, commenting, and then we are going to give away this brand new Bless Our Nest stencil as our grand prize. If you're catching us tonight on the recast, if you have to leave and you can't see it all, you can come in tonight at nine o'clock and you can join us. And um, we will be answering your questions live today at noon and then tonight at nine as well. And that's every Tuesday. All right, so let me put these away. So you're gonna like, share, and comment. And the first thing I always like to ask is where you're from. Um, that fascinates the heck out of me when we have people from like Finland and, and California and all, all the places. So I think that's really cool. Today we're going to be showing <clears throat> you how to do this distressed background. So um, I, there's so, much, so many nuggets in this um, that I can't wait to get started, so let's start now. All right, we're gonna take some brown stain, water-based stain. You could also use paint. Um, it's, the stain is just a little watery, and it, for whatever reason, I chose it. Um, I don't really have a reason, um, and I'm laughing because I chose the black, um, got black stain and I didn't choose the black stain. I'm not sure why I did that. When we're choosing colors and stuff like that, I'll usually go to Pinterest and get an inspiration image and stuff like that. And then I will um, kind of dissect what I see in the background. In my background for um, the image that I chose, there was a variegated kind of different colors going on in the background. So I wanted to give it two different colors for like kind of authenticity. So we'll go in the brown, and I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of water as well. And then I'm just going to smear some paint here and there, different levels. There's no rocket science to this. It's just you want it some here and some there. Um, when we chip and sand away, some's gonna be on this bare MDF, some's gonna be on brown, <clears throat> and some is gonna be on black. So. There is really nothing, I don't even have a system, just smearing it on there. So we'll get it here and there. This is the best kind of painting, right? When you just don't have to worry about it at all. Um, when I am painting, I do try not to um, get my edges really dirty. If I do, then the way that you clean up your edges is you take your foam brush and you load it with paint and you just push it on the edges, so that's how you can clean up your edge without, like if you had to do a paintbrush, it would, um, let me show you that real quick. So I'm gonna go into the black, I'm gonna smoosh it off on my palette, and you can, if you put your glasses on, see the thing. If you just bounce up and down, kind of, and do a little slide, it won't make a ridge on that side and a ridge on this side. If I wiped a paintbrush, I would end up with a big ridge on one side or the other. So that is how you patch your edges. Okay, so tell us what your weather's doing where you're at. We're still chillier than I want it to be. I have, um, my husband is Mr. Chilly, and he does not like the cold of any kind. Even if it's 80 degrees, he'll be like, it's cold. So it's always too chilly. I like it when it's warm though. All right. So we're going to just put that color on there. How many of you have done um, distress techniques like this, um, weathered wood techniques? Um, something that um, I haven't shared is sometimes when you're doing your chipping, you can use um, a petroleum jelly or um, just an everyday wax 
um, not just, I'm gonna use the Clapham's wax today for a, a very, very, very specific reason. So you don't always need a specific thing, but I think today you do. I think it has to be a certain kind, but it goes a long way, so, all right. So isn't that lovely? We've worked very hard to get to this stage. All right, I'm gonna take, we've got these sets of sponges. Oh, and I wanna let you know that down in the, um, the comments and stuff like that, we're gonna have links to things that we don't carry on our website. Um, our website is studior12.com. And sometimes, um, like this mat, for example, is on there. We put a link to an Amazon, the Amazon cart thing or the Amazon store. Um, and that is an affiliate link and we do get like, like a percent or 2% or something like that. I and mean, it's different for every product, but it, we do get that, but we're doing it for you guys so that you can find the thing. And we felt like the Amazon cart was the smartest place because it puts everything in one place and people seem to all be shopping from Amazon. So I've got my sponges. We do carry these on Studio R12. We shorten it sometimes, we call it R12. Okay, so I put this in a baggie to prevent it from drying um, and it did keep it wet, so that is good to know. And then we're gonna go into our wax and I'm gonna put some on the table. I am gonna dry this. I don't think the wax is gonna work as good if I have it wet. What's that you say? This is where I should ask questions so you can type your questions. Let's see, what should I ask? Um, how long have you been painting? That's a good question to ask. Ooh, what? I lead, um, I was thinking about why I do that. I lead with my hand when I'm blow drying so that I'm not blowing things over to like whatever is beside of me. Um, and that has been from years and years of teaching um, painting workshops. Um, and so I still do it, it's just like a habit. I'm gonna use my offset palette knife and this is Clapham's. It's beeswax and salad bowl finish. Um, this is the bomb. This is the best stuff. Um, if you need anything that's food safe, if you have you know, wooden bowls that you serve salads in and things like that, this is what you can use to um, keep them food safe. You can use it on your um, cutting boards and things like that as well. I'm really overkill with this, but the texture of it is what I'm after. So I'm gonna scoop out some of this and then I am going to work it so that it's soft. <clears throat> what I have noticed, and if you guys know of another wax that is, um, got a pliable, malleable um, texture, let me know, put it in the comments, um, because what I'm after is exactly this. If I put uh, petroleum jelly and I try to do the technique I'm gonna do, it's gonna pull the paint when I apply the paint the way I do. Um, if I used um, a harder wax, it wouldn't make the lumps. So what I was trying to get to is I was trying to get to where um, it really peeled off, but I wanted this splotchiness. Um, where it almost is like freckled with, um, with like distress. So that's what I was after, and that's really different than just the chipped paint. So now what I'm gonna do, wipe off my palette knife. Okay. Let us know what you're painting. What are you working on? What's on your painting table today? Is it seasonal? Is it, you know, do you sell? I, I'm very curious about, oops throwing my sponge around. Um, very curious about how many of you um, paint to sell in um, bazaars or you know family or Facebook pages or any of that. Okay, so the technique. I want the most porous area of my sponge. I'm gonna pick up a generous, generous amount of this paint, or paint, wax. And then we're gonna go in, I'm gonna look at my example, and we're going to deposit lumps of wax. And that is gonna give us that beautiful speckled look. I thought about this, um, I thought, you know, it's very possible that you could go ahead and um, 
sponge on some chipped paint looking stuff. So you could sponge black over the top, but I really just don't think you get the same effect. Um, I think that we need like the layered paint and the chipping through and the way it peels back. I think you gotta sponge on the, the wax and do this. I don't think there's a substitute for it. All right, and we wanna come through the middle here and there. <clears throat> I'm running out of my wax. I don't bring it in too much to the edges, so just a little bit more probably do me. And I've done, um, I mean, probably 10 or 20 projects with this jar, and that's a little jar. I don't know how many ounces it is, but, um, but it is, it goes, a little goes a long way. Okay, pick up a little bit more. I love the randomness of that. You can't fake random. Um, so it's neat that the sponge delivers the random. And by twisting my hand this way and that, um, I get some of that out of the edges of the stencil or out of the sponge. So I'm going to put that back in here. Um, I knew I was going to make my sample of this. I knew I was going to be doing this live with you guys really soon after I painted that. So I just went ahead and put it in a baggie um, and that preserves everything. So now I'm going to turn my palette over. Um, I do like the palette paper um, to paint with. That's something that um, we don't talk about a whole lot, but it is um, having that whole flat surface to work on versus like a paper plate. I'm like, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, I used to use like plastic lids, things like that, um, anything to reuse things. But um, I like the flat surface. It's like controllable. All right, so I've got a creamy white and I've got a white. <clears throat> and the reason we're going into both is because the white's too white and the cream's too cream. So we need to go into both. And then this is our um, um, poly foam brush. And this, so I, I like to show this part because um, I was a brush snob, a really bad brush snob, and poly brushes were like, no, don't talk to me about that. Um, but they really give you really good resistance to the bending. If I was using a paintbrush to base, um, it flops really hard and I have to like, way more do things with it. This just glides over the surface. So it actually makes it a little bit simpler, I think is the word, but it will stain your brush. And then I always make sure I push them down into the water and I leave them in water until I'm ready to deal with them. So anyway, I'm just gonna brush mix this on my palette because it's distressed, which means it's not gonna be equally um, colored. All right, <clears throat> and then I'm gonna kind of scoop. I've got a wad of paint on here. If I don't scoop, and then I'm gonna not push on this because I don't wanna blend those chunks out. So I just kind of wanna skim over the top with my really heavy paint. And then I can go back. It's not like crackle where I have to get in and get out and I can't touch it. But I just don't wanna push. This is why another product won't work because I can't skim over the top of a really wet product and I can't skim over the top of something that is not random. Like I'm wanting that randomness that this sponge and this, um, this consistency will do. Okay, so I'm gonna just base over this. And if I miss some areas, um, I'm perfectly okay with that. And then I will go back and just kind of straighten myself out if I get a little bit um, too chunky. This will take a long time to dry. Um, the best, best darn thing in the world for you to do is to just do it and then go to dinner or, you know, go away, start something else um, because it takes a long time. Okay, so I'm not going to show you um, how to base coat this entire board because I think that would be boring. But you can see I'm just picking up the paint, putting it down. That's what we do as stencil fans, right? We pick up the paint and put it down. Okay. So that is how you're gonna base. Now, if I didn't like, if my coverage wasn't enough, I would just let it dry completely and then I would go back over it. Okay, so um, this is gonna form a plastic shield over the top of this wax and um, that is what you want. Now, I'm gonna peel this paper away. They're connected like a, like a pad of, um, a pad of like just note paper or whatever. It's just got that 
rubber seal on the edge. So now we're going to get rid of this one. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, trying to wear it all. Okay, so now we've got a dry one. Thank goodness for this. Stages. All right, and then I've got my um, sanding block, and I've got a new sanding block, but I wanted to show you how to change your sanding block. Um, your sanding blocks are good for a really good long time, um, but when they get super coated, because like a lot of times I will, I mean, that's so smooth, it's not even like rough on my finger. Um, it will pick up the wet paint and it will deposit it there. And so let me show you what you do. Get those. I'm gonna move that off to the side. I thought I was ready to do that. Okay, so what you're gonna do, these are, this is a 3M product. This will be linked down below. That's an, gonna be an outside link, an affiliate link. So what you're gonna do is you're going to pick up the edge and it's really hard to do the first time because you think that you're like hurting things. You pick up the edge and there's little teeth. There's three little teeth right on in there. And the bottom rolls away and the top rolls away. It's almost something that you need to tag team with somebody else to do. You pull that out, flip it over, pull that out. Now what you've got here is you've got a big old ruined piece of sandpaper and you've got two good ends. So what I do for where I'm not filming is I take the, the ends that I chip away or the, that I cut away and these pieces and then they go into just a jar. And then if I want some super sanding power, I go in and fold and I can go in and just dig right at my surface. And that is the best way to get like really, really distressed. Okay. So I save these, they're still good. And then the way that you load it is you lift up the thing. Let me get it centered on there. Lift up the thing and don't laugh at me. Nope, we're gonna do it a different way. Okay, we're gonna start on one end. Yeah! It's like, where are my muscles? And you pull it back. It is really, really, really hard to do. And then, whoops, I'm not straight, hang on. I will get this. I actually can do this very well. It's just hard to do. Okay, then you pinch that together and then you wrap it around and you do the same thing on the other side. And I feel like now that you've watched me struggle this through, I'm gonna finish it. Okay, so we roll it in, my arms are shaking. This is something that you say, honey, do you love me? Would you put my sandpaper in there for me? Okay, so now we've did it. Ta-da! <laughs> Holy moly. Okay, didn't know we were coming for the workout video, did you? Okay, we're gonna go here. Now you are the master of how to do your sanding disc. I'm gonna get rid of that. This has been pre-done. Um, you can see lots and lots of lumpy paint. Um, lots of, can see where my um, waxy stuff is. This is gonna make my sanding paper a mess, but we don't care. Okay, so we're, what we're gonna do is we are going to hold it down and we're gonna see what happens. So right away what happens, and right away what happens is your sandpaper's already a mess. So it's just gonna lift those bits off. Isn't that the coolest thing? Hippie noodle time, right? We're gonna blow some hippie noodles today because I think if you don't have to struggle with that and you can just like sponge on some distressing places, like why wouldn't you? And then that looks so natural. I love it. So then you wanna grab your edges, you wanna make them. Oh yeah. Okay, now I've got it kinda of caked on here. What's also gonna happen is you're going to get your sand block. Um, you're gonna get it kind of waxy and you're gonna be smearing wax everywhere. I'll show you what to do about that. Okay, so let's go in. Get what we can, and then I'm gonna take some time to, to distress out some of my edges. My grain of my wood is going up and down, so I wanna make sure that my grain of my <clears throat> chipped paint is going up and down too. I wouldn't wanna go across this way, knowing that I'm gonna have these fake, I love how this ended up looking 
like shiplap or like old barn wood or whatever. So um, keeping that grain is really important. Okay. So remember you're liking, sharing, and commenting. And remember that we have a YouTube channel. I think that the YouTube channel is um, such a resource for you guys. I'm gonna go into the newer sanding block. I'm gonna flip me around. I'm a right-handed sander. And there is, a, there is an instep in your hand, so it's got like a thumb hold, and then it just makes it really a painless way to do big sanding. Okay. Get that. So I'm not sure how far to go with this. I think I'm gonna leave this at this stage because I think you get the idea. I don't think you need to see the whole, the whole thing be sanded. But what I wanna do now, oh. Yes, I do, because this is what I'm going to paint on. I'll keep going. Oh my goodness. Every now and again, I crack myself up. So what's in your um, drink tumbler today? We um, have our 12 tumblers, and we also have them with really cool sayings. This is not wine yet. We'll be later. It's usually just chamomile tea for me. Okay, so now I'm doing the same thing on this one. I'm gonna flip it over to get the middle distressing. How much distressing do I have in there? I completely love this. It just looks so authentically chipped. And um, check this out right here on this edge. That's really cool because it just looks so, see how it fades in chipped? That looks like somebody got in there and just like banged against the sides of the, the sign. Okay, now I need, I'm gonna grab one of these pieces that I was talking about earlier. So the paint in the middle right here is thick and it's hard and it's cured and I need to be able to dig through it. So I'm gonna fold my sandpaper to give me like a mini one of these. Ooh, there's another one. It's kind of fun to just go back through and discover where you put everything. This technique, because it has texture to it um, from the paint and from all of that, that is exactly what I talked about in the beginning. That is what is going to give your distressing on top an edge. So you are going to, you are going to dig it. So um, know that we have a YouTube page. I think I was talking about that earlier. I don't know that I finished it. Um, we have lots of videos. We have videos without people talking. We have videos with us talking and teaching. We have Ask Carries, which are where we take the questions that you ask, so make sure you're asking questions. Um, we take those questions and then we make an episode on them where Carrie asks Carrie or Carrie asks Patty or whatever. But it's always Carrie asking. Okay, so I've got that kind of beat up a little bit. Make sure you're asking questions. That'll get you entered to win our prizes. If you're catching us on YouTube later, make sure you like, subscribe, ring the bell. Um, and all that, and come and see us on Tuesdays on Facebook because that's where you'll be able to win the prizes, okay? So I'm gonna call that about right. I can add more later. This mat has been phenomenal. I'm gonna brush it off right now. Whew. It's made out of silicone and it's huge, and you just spritz it with some Zep cleaner and you use I don't know why I'm talking like this now. Use your sponge after it sits there for a minute and it cleans it right off. It makes it great for protecting your um, surfaces. Okay, but it also, that zap is how we're gonna remove some of that wax. So what you're gonna do is you're just going to spritz that on there. Anything that's a degreaser will work. And then I'll use my sponge and I'll be taking that wax that's left on the surface right on off of there. Okay. 
dry that off a little bit. And then I'm gonna use my blow dryer. Whew. I made paint fly. All right, get rid of these guys. And dry. Okay, what shall we ask this time? Do you guys use blow dryers when you're painting? And like, do you hold them? Do you put them on the floor? Like, that's super interesting. And you know what, by the way, if you have a picture of where you paint, I would love it if you would share that on Facebook or social. Um, I'll share mine um, in future things because I think it's interesting to see what kind of, what your setup is, you know? <clears throat> All right, and so today I wanted to do a very cool thing. I wanted to paint with a dirty stencil. Um, and it's also not the same size as my surface because I think that that is something that gets missed. And I have one more step I have to do before we do this. But I wanted to share that you don't have to clean your stencils, but I wanted to share that you can. So let me show you that step right now. So same, I'm not, um, Zep was just the thing that I picked up at Lowe's or Home Depot. So if you go onto your surface with warm soapy water, I'm gonna show you how to clean all the things today. It'll just peel right off. And I'm using the scrubby side because it's not soaking. If you, um, if you did this in your sink and you, like half of it was in warm soapy water, I'd say maybe three minutes in warm, not hot because hot might make the mylar stretch or whatever, but warm soapy water, um, just a couple of minutes will do it and then that will, um, that'll peel right off like nobody's business. And you wanna be careful about, um, like here's my O, will flip a little bit either way. I wouldn't want to go across it this way. I'd want to be mindful of where my bridging is. Did you see how I just cut that end right there? So you do want to be mindful when you're doing it, but um, you definitely can clean your stencils if you want to. I clean them if I've used them about um, maybe every five times. They start, you'll, you'll notice, they'll start losing the detail of like the tight stuff. But like a big stencil like this, you could probably go 20 times before you really lost detail. Um, it's just gonna depend on how much paint you put in. Okay, we have one more step. Okay, so we're gonna do this. Gonna get out the mighty T-square. Okay, this is the big guy. You could use the smaller one. Um, I just happen to have this one. So I'm not going to measure these boards because, um, because I'm not. Um, the, I'm gonna get out my black paint. I think I'm gonna go with a stain. Water-based stain, and these are honey, <clears throat> honey bottles, and they are linked below as well. Everybody asks about them all the time. We just buy paint in the ginormous cans, and that means that we need it in smaller containers. And we just are using a water-based acrylic paint. Okay, so then I'm gonna put my T-square on my straight edge, and then I'm just going to do a little draggy drag Move it over, draggy drag. Is that not the coolest thing? Okay, how many hippie noodles just went right then? Like I could think of so many harder ways to do this than this. Something about the, the poliness of the poly brush and the T-square and the dry brushing and everything, it just makes it look ragged, rustic and awesome. Okay, you don't want it too strong. You don't want to take over. Whoops. Who thinks this is the coolest thing? Who's gonna be painting a lot more wood projects? Isn't that neat? I love it. Okay, that should in essence be dry because we didn't do anything with it. So now, well, there wasn't, it was dry paint really. I'm gonna get fresh tape because my tape probably touched um, some of the wax on the other surface. Um, when I paint for myself, I don't follow all the rules. Um, so I probably didn't wash it off with the Zep. Just FYI, you don't have to do everything I'm doing. Um, a lot of times though, what I'm showing you is, you know, like things I learned by doing it wrong the first time. So. 
if I have a recommendation, I'm like that person, I'm the friend that'll tell you you got something on your nose, you know? So um, I'm that painting friend who will tell you, please don't do that, you're gonna, you're gonna crash. Okay, so now we're gonna get out our dome brushes. If you're a beginner and you haven't um, mastered not bleeding under your stencil, this is where you're gonna wanna pay attention. So we're doing two things here, getting that real black paint. not stain. And I've actually, this is a black green, not a black. And I'm gonna go into, I'm gonna mix my yellows. I did like four coats of yellow on this because I couldn't find what I really wanted. So no matter what I did, I was wrong. And that's why I really do encourage you to, um, to mix your paints. Um, years and years and years and years and years and years I've taught um, how to you know, use this exact bottle of paint because it's easy to like replicate exactly and I get that. But if you mix your paint, it's gonna be your DNA and your thumbprint and your painting style and your colors will marry better for you and stuff like that. So there's really good reasons to, to do it yourself. Move that. I'm gonna use my offset palette knife so that keeps my fingers out of everything. This is where you would not want to um, brush mix your paint because if you brush mix these paints, um, you'll be in that dome brush. And the reason you want the dome brush is because you're going to really dry the brush off. So if you're a beginner, the way that you use this brush, so this brush is a stencil brush because it's curved over the top in all the directions. A regular, um, what they call a stencil brush, um, is completely flat on top. And when you slam down on it, um, you have to like it, you have to push really hard and it kicks those bristles underneath the edges of your stencil. So by using a dome brush, it allows you to be up on your tippy toes. And so it doesn't touch, let's do the back of my hand. It doesn't touch everywhere at once. And if I really want pressure, I have to really push down. So that's where you get that control. You get to decide how much to push. So on our, we're going to do a drop shadow and we have to get ready to do the drop shadow. With all stenciling, um, what drop shadow does is we take the stencil and we mark where it's sitting with its um, main color. So this main color is yellow. So I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of paint. Notice that there's not a big wad anywhere. I'm going to wipe it 10 times on my brush, keeping it kind of concentrically. If I travel all over the place, I'll probably take off too much and I probably just did doing that. Um, five to 10 times is good. When you're a beginner, go for the 10 so that you don't mess up. All right, I'm gonna mark the edges of the things. You don't have to do too much work here. I'm gonna mark the bottoms of things. And you wanna do it in your color that you're gonna go back to because then you'll know where to put the stencil when we go back. I and mean, you'll see what I mean in just a minute. Just a hot second. Okay, going to, so if this works for the sponge, it should work for my brush. So I'm just gonna wrap that in a plastic bag. We talked about that before. Um, it works for rollers. If it works for rollers, it'll work for a brush. I'm gonna squiggle on my black. I'm gonna do the same thing here, because that is, main color is the, the black green. <clears throat> and I chose the black green because it's not, um, so black is so black, and the white was too white, and like that kind of thing. So you wanna make sure that you are, um, like if it's an antique, it's not gonna be so rich and colored, you know? It's gonna be um, aged and dark. So I just want the parameters of my letters. And then we are going to slide everything. So you can see that I've just got some ghosty ghost stuff. And then I'm gonna drop everything over. I'm gonna go over to my left by um, eighth quarter of an inch. You don't want too far because it'll make the little letters messy. Eighth quarter of an inch and down an eighth or a quarter of an inch. Okay, and then I wanna do it on my letters. I love this bar, it's giving me a really good idea of where I'm at. Okay, need to be straight. 
just kind of eyeballing everything. Okay, and now I'm looking at my borders to make sure that my borders still look straight. So I'm tracking pretty well there. Now I'm going to go back to my yellow word and it's going to get the black green. So now we go and this is this is the work part. So I'm going to show you a little bit of this and then show you the antiquing. I I'm going to kind of go on one side or the other. <clears throat> All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start swirling. And I like to swirl. How many of you are swirlers versus stippling? You can stipple, and stippling's fine. It's just a lot more work, and it takes longer, and it's blotchier, and um, there's a lot of reasons to swirl. And I've said in a bunch of the, these lives and things like that that I don't even know when I started swirling, that there's not like a, a time or a date that I realized I was. I don't even know where I learned it from. Usually I can like, oh, that technique, I learned it from this person. But this, I have no idea. It's so amazing though. And I think you'll notice, um, I don't think it's very common. So I don't know who showed it to me, but I thank you, whoever it was. So, and if you're afraid of swirling, since stencils are so reusable, and by the way, vinyl is great. Like if you're a vinyl, vinyl person and stuff like that, stencils versus vinyl, um, if you're doing something on your wall, um, the vinyl can peel off, but then usually, I've seen it in my friends' houses, it starts peeling off. Stencils, if you use light coats, you can just lightly sand that when you don't want it on there anymore and then paint right over it and you don't have to peel, and you don't have to poke, and you don't have to do all of that. So just remember that um, there's good reasons to, um, oh, hey, I'm doing the whole thing. Um, good reasons to use stencils. Um, vinyl is, and then you can only use it one time if you stencil through it, and then it's like you poked it and you've spent all your time. I don't know, not a fan. Um, we went to some workshop, me and a couple of girls, and they had the vinyl um, stencils, and, um, and one of, our, one of the girls that we went with um, completely and utterly did not put her stencil where it belonged. And um, she was stuck with her results because they don't offer a second one at that class. And, you know, it was, it was, it was tragic waste of money is what it was. <clears throat> Pardon me. Okay, I'm going to pull out my other brush, which is, I'm happy to say, nice and wet. And I need another paper towel and a sip of my tea. Ah. Okay, go into our yellow. Really wipe that off. And now I'm gonna go on these, um, these letters. So this is kind of silly to do um, because you're like base coating, you know, the entire letter just to get the drop shadow. But um, it is the easiest way. Now I'm super, <clears throat> excuse me, apparently that tea did not do me any favors. <coughs> Goodness. Um, I'm super good with a round brush, but I've been trained for 30 years. So if you're new to a round brush and you don't know which end is up from that, um, you, this is your technique. Um, so I show this to you because this is the easiest way for people that maybe don't know how to use all the different brushes to do. But if you're experienced, I would probably not do this. I would just go ahead and freehand my um, drop shadow. And I can, I don't, I don't know if I have a brush to show you. I don't think I do. I'll show you in another episode. I think that would be a good, a good tip. All right, so, are we, nope, we are not dry. Apparently yellow doesn't dry very fast. You can blow dry right through your stencil. up my brush and go again. This is kind of magic. I actually, my hippie noodle was blown when I learned how to do this. Um, I was at a trade show um, where we have booths and, you know, selling our goods and stuff like that. And um, one of the other people that uses stencils was there showing this. And I was like, oh my God, are you kidding me? You can do that? It was so cool. All right, so we're gonna pick up more black. 
and we'll do one more coat on the side of this. Get that on. Oops, that's the wrong page. Um, don't stencil with the stains because the stains are um, they're too liquidy. So you want so newbies, <laughs> please, please wipe off your paint. Um, don't use foamy things to paint with because you will shove that paint right under. Dry off on the paper towel and don't use wet brushes. Those are the like the rules. If you follow those rules, you're going to do great. So. Um, just you gotta you gotta control a couple things. Liquid is one of them. If you have to wash your brushes, then you should leave them overnight and maybe sometimes even to the next day um, to be able to get them dry enough to use again. Um, and speaking of brushes, um, we have had a lot of people ask about care of brushes, so I thought I'd do a little thing. We'll let that dry by itself for a second. Um, I have this lovely bucket from the hardware store, and I've got this is a ginger grater. Okay, so I'm gonna dip my brush in the water and then I just swirl on the ginger grater. And I, if I had running water, I would do it under running water. You don't use any soap and I do it until my water runs clean and it takes, you know, like a minute per brush. If I use like 30 brushes, I'm always sad. But that's how I clean them and then it's very important for you to know the difference um, in your brush hairs. This is a natural fiber. This is a synthetic fiber. If I do this with this brush, I will trash this brush. So what I do with these under my running water is I run them along the ginger graters in one direction. I don't go back and forth. I flip it over and I go the other direction, okay? And then I flip it over and I've got running water. Um, if you needed some soap on this one, you could do it. If you use soap on this one, you're gonna have like sudsy painting. So don't use soap on these. And then same thing for like our big Taclon um, base coater. Same thing, I would go one direction until my water ran clear. And then what I do when I'm painting, these brushes and these brushes go right in the water and they sit there until I'm done. I don't do anything special with them. I don't try to clean them. With these brushes, I'm gonna take this guy out. Put him over there. With these guys, I go right into the bottom and I'm, I'll show it to you outside of this. I go right into the bottom and I press my bristles on the bottom of my container and then I swish, okay? I don't do this because once again, I'm gonna trash that tip, okay? So I push it, push it, push it and that splaying is loosening out and then I swish it and then I always pinch out all of my water and that will make it so I can go wash my brush later. If I don't do this and I put them in here um, without swishing them, they get formed like this and then your brush is ruined. And these are your expensive babies. These are cheap. You can have a million of these and be as mean to them as you want, but these guys are your money and you don't want to wreck these unless you just like wrecking brushes. Anyway, that's how you clean your brushes. Okay, so back to our, let's dry up our mess. I hope that's helpful. Please um, put in the comments and stuff, like I totally wanna know if you thought it was helpful, if you're confused by anything, um, just let me know and we'll address it in another video, okay? All right, so now that we've got two good base coats, we're gonna take that stencil off. You can kind of see we've got this like weird mess going on. But now we go back to the original color. And so, doo -doo -doo -doo. original color's yellow on top. And show off the top of my head. Making sure that I've got my original black. Okay. And yellow all lined up. Oh, the lining up part. Okay. I'm going to call that. Push it down. Um, you always want to tape on both sides of your stencil. Um, if you tape on only one side, the whole stencil can move. If you tape in two spots that are opposite sides of things, then your stencil will be nice and stable. Okay, so we're gonna go on to, this is part of the reason I don't love doing the drop shadow through this stencil. This word is huge. That's black, and I've gotta go over black with yellow. So how do I do that? Like, 
how do I make this not be a PETA factor? Okay, so we are gonna go into some of our cream and we are going to erase some of the black. So the way that we do that is we're gonna use our paint. I can do it dirty brush and my yellow and we're gonna use that cream to erase the contrast that the black is giving us. And I'm just kind of squishing the paint on there. <clears throat> So covering up strong colors, a red, a black, um, dark anything um, is difficult. So we get that paint squinched on there. And then we'll dry. The yellow, the black going over the yellow is not a problem. It's this big giant word right through the middle that has to be yellow. The blow dryer is your friend. You want one that is just sits here. You don't want to go chase it down. You want a blow dryer for your craft room. I'm going to do one more coat of the white because I think that's still going to be terrible. I may even do one more after this. So I think this is good to know. Sometimes it can be really frustrating when you, so I forget what I know, right? So I'm doing this project and I totally took out the yellow. And I totally was like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, just base over my black with my yellow. And then it was like, oh. like four coats later, I was like, Patty, you know what you're doing. Stop being dumb. So I, this is why you watch videos like this, so I can show you how not to be like me. All right, so we go on here and cut the color. Sometimes you could use a gray, but I think that the yellow will be brighter because we used um, the cream color. And so your back color, sometimes um, your color that you put underneath something, if you um, put a white color under a red, you're going to get a pink. So if you're basing something with um, red, then you want to use like a gray. And then if you are doing yellow where you're going to want some brightness, it's good not to use a gray because that'll make it muddy. Okay, on your stencils being dirty, there are reasons to have clean stencils, and one of those reasons <clears throat> is that you can see through these. So some some stencils in the world are not see through. These are called cloudy, and um, you can see through them, and that is super beneficial when you are making decisions. Like say, say I was using two or three stencils, and I wanted to see what I had going on. If you get too much schmutz on there then you're not going to be able to see to be able to layer your stencils. So you want to be able to see through. So if, if you were going to layer, I would wash my stencil at that point. I guess I could talk and move the brush at the same time. Sorry. All right. So are you liking, sharing, and commenting? I hope you're enjoying what we're showing you today. And I'm going to blow dry that. And I think I'm going to dump you in the water. One more time. Hey, hey, come on. So every time that we get a project like this together, we are, we brainstorm things that we've seen in questions. I'm going to throw these away. We totally want to always bring you new content so I hope that um, you're seeing stuff that you're interested in I hope that you'll share and we've got people answering your questions live so um, and then we go back through the questions and you know write them down so that we can remember what we want to show you guys um, based on what you've said you want to see okay so now we're gonna go over that color with our gold with their goldy gold and And that's covering pretty darn well. So that'll take a couple. Yellow and red. Mm. Those are the two colors. Um, paint companies do not put very much pigment in yellow paints. Uh, well, we'll put it another way. The pigments are super expensive. And so in order to keep costs low, they tend to put filler in them and not as much pigment. And so you have to work really hard with yellows and reds to get a good color base. All right. So we're going to... 
do the yellow. I'm gonna blow dry. Remember, if you're finding this content interesting, would you do me a favor and would you share it with like your painting groups and stuff like that? Like just, you know, send an email, send a Facebook chat, you know, whatever, um, tag people in it. Um, because if we're not sharing, I, I kind of liken it to like back in the day when you had to wear pantyhose, like everybody had to have pantyhose. If the legs would go on sale at the store for like $1.50 or something like that, you were like calling your friends being like, there yeah, for $1.50, go hurry. You know, you would share. So I think that this is the same kind of thing. If you know that this is saving you time and effort and money, make sure to share it with your painting buddies. This is a small little community of like stencil fans that we've got here. So I think it's when you find a nugget that you like, make sure you share it. And then if you like things um, or save them, then it will mark them so that you can see them later. And that's always super helpful. And it's not always the easiest thing to do. I'm not so good with technology. And I do know that it can be a pain in the tush. Okay, so i got those coats. I'm gonna go there and then I'm gonna get another brush for my black. Um, if your brush gets left out, and hardens, this one's got a little side nugget of stuff. Um, side nuggets. Anyway, if that, um, it happens to you, what you can do is you can use your rubbing alcohol um, and you can put it on your um, ginger grater and you can get the paint out that way. It is not necessary, let me find a newer one. These um, get stained. Um, you can see that this one doesn't have a bunch of paint down there. You can see this one doesn't really have it far down because you really are pushing it into your brush. Um, it's not necessary to clean out from the base as much as it is to keep this movement right, right there like that. And this one's just a little bit on the stiff side. So, and then um, I showed on another video, this one um, had flattened itself. And so I just took scissors to it so you can run these down to their nubs and they are amazing brushes. Okay, we're gonna go in the black, the black green. <clears throat> Get some paint. We're liking, sharing, and commenting. And then what do you guys binge watch when you're, or I don't know if you're binging necessarily, but what do you watch when you're painting? What's your, what's your favorite pastime? All right, so we're gonna go over the other, I want to show you both sides and see how it looks with both colors done. You notice that I'm <clears throat> the professional that knows what she's doing and doing all of that. I'm even swirling on this. There is no shortcut to this. There is no, I don't have to swirl because I've been painting for 30 years, that there's no card for that. You have to get rid of that paint on your brush. Um, I don't know of any other way We've been doing it wrong all this time, right? Okay. So just get that black on there. Do here. I can't wait for you to see the distressing that I'm gonna do on top of these letters. That's worth the price of admission. I, I almost shed a tear when it was working so well. I was like, ah, look what we did. Like it's, it's a lot of fun to play with new techniques and discover. I enjoy it. Okay, gonna blow dry again. This should be called the blow dryer episode. I also generally touch my paint as I'm blow drying um, it just lets me know how things are doing. You wanna be careful not to streak through your paint. That's wet. So I'll like put fingers down like I just did there and I picked it up, but I didn't smear it. This black green's not behaving much better than the yellow. One more time. This only looks good if you've got enough coats.
and now I'm wanting coverage. So now I'm going to pull out my stipple and I'm going to lay it down. If you stipple, in the smaller areas especially, you'll get better coverage than swirling. Don't push too hard. Um, you don't want to push the paint under your stencil. This is like sign language for pushing your paint under. I notice that Lena and I both do the same like movement to describe that. Okay, so now what you'll notice on here when I'm stippling is it'll, if I'm not careful and I don't like gradually go across it, if I put a dot there and a dot there, you can tell that they're dots. So I have to move across while they're wet and then I can do a bigger area. Okay, get these words done. Did you see how much faster that um, the stippling was covering? So for coverage, I wouldn't do it on the yellow because I don't think that yellow has enough guts to do it, but the black is definitely um, reading way better. Okay, we are good. Okay, so I'm gonna take my stencil off. Neat. Love, love, love. I love the two colors of the drop shadow. I think that that's magic. Okay, now watch this, guys, right? <clears throat> when you have this wonderful, yummy texture under there, and then you, I better blow dry first, hang on. I had you going. If I would have sanded just then, I would have ended up with a great big smeary mess. So, but when you have this, now you want to sand with your grain. When you have that texture, it's just going to lift that paint. I better get a better sanding block. <clears throat> okay. Oh, yeah. So your wax is going to peel a little bit. Your texture is going to peel a little bit. See how that just made that fresh, perfect base coat into the most perfect distressing. I oh, love it. Hot diggity dog. It's a good day when you can distress something perfectly the very first time. That makes my heart sing. Okay, we're gonna do some antiquing and I'll show you how that looks. You're gonna go into your black green What do you think of that technique? That Bursting into song in my head, oh happy day, right? All right, so we just have very little paint on our brush and I patted it off. Um, it can be scary to distress um, or to do the antiquing sometimes, so. And then I am on my tippy toe and I only just skim. I do not want to push down, I'm not base coating. And I wanna do my corner, I always do my corners and then I'll lean my brush over to get a skinnier line, and then I might lean back straight to get a varied texture. Load some more. Pull it down, and then I can pretend like my, my um, board is maybe more chipped over there. So I can pull that down and then turn my brush sideways to pull it in. <clears throat> I always turn my board Turn my project. You never want to, you don't want to like antique like this, okay? You want to like know where your arm can move. You want to have this cleared space right there. And I'm, I'm, you see me using my wrist, but if I need to, I pull my arm back. Okay, I'll do a little bit more. If you check on our YouTube page and you can see that project that we did, the Dirty Cowboy. This would be an ideal candidate to do the dirty thing on this thing. And that sounds really wrong and I'll show you what I mean. But that's a technique that we learned from another blogger and it's amazing. I wanna show you um, the spattering and then I'll show you the part about the dirty cowboy. And no, it's not wrong. Okay, so I'm gonna get water. And with our spattering, this is just the most controlled way you can spatter. Um, Probably the third or fourth brush you ought to buy when you're buying brushes is this rake brush because this makes spattering 
so controllable and so easy. So you're gonna use thinned milky paint. So I'm gonna water it down until it's like ink or like cream. If you say it like that, it works better. Okay, we're gonna go there and then we're gonna get our brush and I'm gonna bring it here and show you. I always test on something. I never ever go right to my project, ever. Like, really ever. I don't even break that rule. So I'm gonna spatter over here and you can see it's shedding. And then I'm gonna come over and give some spatters. I want it heavier, so I'm gonna wet it down more. I want big juicy drops to drop down. Okay. Love, love, love. Okay, one more spatters. Oh, I hope you can see these on the screen. Amazing. All right, and made a giant mess. Okay, now your spattering is gonna stay wet for a really long time. Um, We're about at the end of everything, so like, share, and comment. And I'm trying to think of what in the world I was gonna show you after this. And, distressing. Oh, the dirty cowboy, how could I leave you hanging like that? That would not have been cool. All right, you ready? This is so much weird. A bag of ashes, this is literally fireplace soot ashes. And what you can do, and you can I'll leave them, I'll do the top area and you can see the difference. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna, just gonna dig in there. If you use the big black parts, they'll leave black lines. And then, but if you use the little bits like that, just put them on there and give it the dirty cowboy treatment. Okay, so we'll just rub it in kind of evenly. I mean, like you could go out and get some dirt and you could do the same thing with that. And then you wipe it off and you can see that you get a tone in the background. If you have a little bit of the black in it with it, it'll actually leave some dark marks and that you can wipe off and do your thing. So the Dirty Cowboy is just adding that dirt on top. And I love the randomness of whatever. I didn't leave the bottom, sorry. It is dirty. All right. And then that is, see the difference between this and this? Isn't that the coolest thing? So now you know the secret to how to do the dirty cowboy. Thanks guys. Join us again next week. <laughs>